So there's a little section here um, which I wasn't actually going to cover but I think uh, there's good reason to do so. And what it's about is using these finite differences um, and yeah just getting better at using the finite differences basically is what I'm talking about. So if you've got a, a something like this and you want to find the temperature distribution assuming that it's insulated on the top and the bottom and uninsulated around the edges you've got a problem because you can't do a square uh, grid that's a problem okay so how do we get around something like that so you can mesh it and the, the grid will be pretty good except say around here so basically all of this is fine this is fine this is fine uh, even this is fine 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 this is your problem and obviously if you do a finer mesh uh, you might have more uh, problems so in the irregular region we have to approximate Laplace's equation a little more carefully what that means is you can't do the mean value property you can't just say that this is the average of these four um, looking at it it's a little bit difficult uh, even looking at it um, yeah right <laughs> it's a little bit difficult we we can't average these because it's not a circle so the mean value theorem just doesn't really apply okay so this is why I said I'd do this so it's good to help you work with um, finite differences so we need a little bit of notation here I think we're going to go with we're, gonna, we're just going to call this um, I think T1 I'm going to assume that we've got a boundary condition of 75 here And we're going to call this temperature T and you see what we need to do is to be able to approximate the second derivative of T with respect to X where this is X okay and it's let's see how we get on um, I seem to have lost the page which is not ideal unfortunately I have no pause on this yoke which is a disaster so you just have to bear with me two seconds while I suss this out yeah okay right we'll do our best here okay so this is saying with the finite differences rather than using kind of formulas that are say will be given to you in an assessment um just do rise over run just do rise over run now this delta x which is equal to delta y now this thing um would be is, is a proportion of x it's not equal to the whole of x so this would be equal to um, alpha delta x now to find this is not I think impossible um, I'm not sure off the top of my head how you do it um, it, it shouldn't be it, you should be able to do it so I think um if you draw something like this yeah look i won't i won't worry about it but it, it shouldn't be too difficult because it's a point on a circle uh you've got the equation of a circle you know the y coordinate you can find the x coordinate and if you know the x coordinate and you know delta x you can find alpha delta x alpha here is just a proportion thing okay anyway I'm only trying to just I'm more interested in the finite differences more than anything so what you're going to do here is um, evaluate the first derivative at two different regions over this region and over this region so this will be say t dashed right and t dashed left and we're interested at this point and what you do is you do rise over run so over this period the the the, the rise over run or the change in temperature of the distances t1 minus t is the difference in temperature over delta x and then the left one is the um, rise is it goes t minus 75 that's the difference over alpha delta x now this is the bit that hopefully i can get right because it'll be a bit embarrassing if i can't I think what we end up with, and I can kind of cheat by looking at the next page, but I don't want to do that either, is let us say that 
we want to say that the second derivative remembers the rate of change of derivatives. So this should be approximately a change. I don't know if I'm going to get this right. In the first derivative over this is a dash over the change in x. Um, so looking at it, hmm, can I confidently write something down? Right, I can. This is, when this is at the left point, what this means is it's the derivative here. And this, the right point, means its derivative here. Now this one is called a, a, a what's called a backwards Euler, uh, or excuse me, a backwards finite difference. It's going backwards, and this one is going forwards. But they're both good. So what I can do is I can do okay. What's the change in the derivative? Well, it's approximately the derivative over here, which I'll call um, t dashed right. That's the derivative here. And the difference between them will be the right one minus the left one over the change in x, which would be alpha delta x plus delta x. And then you, you put in these two things here and you end up with something like uh, t1 minus t over delta x minus the left one t minus 75 over alpha delta x all divided by I can take out a common factor of delta x in the bottom and get alpha plus 1 delta x now this is really all, as far as I want to push this so this idea of finite differences as a, a change in the function divide, uh, divided by the difference in say x for example you can simplify this and what you actually end up with is something like this uh, if you end up, this is your equation. Now, obviously, it's far nastier, um, but ultimately, it is. If this is t one, and this is t two, ultimately, you end up with a formula for this temperature in terms of these two. So it's perfectly good. And um, so that's one thing that you won't be assessed on. But it's something to I suppose think about and the other thing is there's something called a derivative boundary condition but that's a, a further remark i don't need to get into that so the big story here is derivatives can be approximated by the change in the function over the change in what's called the independent variable and that's even that's done on two levels here here for the first derivative and here for the second the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative so it's the change in the first derivative over the change in the independent variable and this is something we will see in the next section. It can be done with a formula, but can also be done on a looser level, just rise over it.